Hey, what's up, everybody? Every time I post a sculpt online, somebody is bound to ask me, can I get the files to 3D print it? It may sound simple, but it's actually a super complicated process to grab a sculpt and make it actually 3D printable. So I figured that today I'm gonna show you how I would take one of my sculpts and print it. I recently just upgraded to a Elegoo Saturn 4 Ultra and figured it would be the perfect occasion to show you this process. We're gonna be printing the chess set that I made in the previous video. And if I were to just take the sculpt straight up and print it, it would be a mess for multiple reasons. First of all, all those little lines that you see means that the parts aren't fused together. And any holes like this would trap some pockets of uncured resin that would end up cracking and leaking once your print is finished. So if I want a sculpt to be actually 3D printable, I have to go back in and fill in every gap in the geometry for the whole sculpt. It's a pretty tedious process, but I couldn't even imagine doing it in something else than VR. It would be an absolute nightmare in Blender to go back in and try to fill every single hole. Now with this chess set, I started with the idea that I wanted to 3D print it. So there wasn't really that much cleaning up to do because I planned ahead and I designed with the limitations of 3D printing in mind. After exporting everything from Modeler, I imported back in ZBrush just to give it a quick dynamesh that allows me to fuse everything together and get the amount of polygons down from high to medium. In the end, each piece ends up being around a million polys. Then you can bring everything in your favorite slicer. Shout out Lychee Slicer. And I don't know why, but it still imports with some structural errors. So I just hit it with the quick repair 3D model to fill all the holes and make the geometry nice and clean. You can see that all the pieces are solid and fused together. It should print really well. Now, sometimes if I see that there's still pockets in the geometry for resin to get stuck, I'll have to go back into VR and then fill it again and then export it again and do the whole ZBrush Dynamesh thing. So it's super tedious. I better get it right the first time. Now comes the painstaking process of supporting your whole model. Now, I won't go too much into detail about this because this is a whole art in itself. There's a ton of really good resources on YouTube on how to do supports from people that are way better at 3D printing. I recommend checking out uh, 3D Printing Pro. He has a lot of good resources on that. But basically, you're adding extra material to help your model print properly. You're creating some kind of temporary structure that attaches your model to the build plate and prevents stuff that is overhanging from not printing. It's a super tedious process because you have to manually place and think about the precise placement of every support and each piece can have hundreds if not thousands of little supports. Now if you're thinking, oh that didn't look too bad, this little pawn only took you 5 minutes to do the supports. Well let me show you another model so you can get an idea of how much work would be needed on a raw sculpt that was not made with 3D printing in mind. At the bare minimum, every little red spot you see here needs to be supported and there's about 500 of them all over the place at some angles that are kind of impossible to reach with the supports. And this is where you need to come in and split those parts so you can print them separately. And that's on top of having to fill every single gap in the model. This whole process is the main reason why I don't often 3D print my own sculpts because sculpting could take me couple of hours but prepping a model could take me days if not weeks and I'd rather just sculpt something new and jump on the next project. That's also why I'm so grateful that somebody offered their help to make all this process much smoother. So now back to our little pawn print. I'm gonna be printing eight of them twice. One set for black, one set for white. I export the sliced file to a USB stick and in the export you can see the preview of every layer that's gonna get printed 
all 1032 of them. Each layer has a height of 0.05 millimeters. The slicer gives us an estimate of an hour 30 minutes to print, but it actually took about 2 hours and 30 in total. Since I got a brand new printer, I figured I would try a brand new resin as well. And I found something that is a bit less toxic than your average resin, and it's the Sunlu ABS-like water-soluble resin. It was my first time trying it, so I wasn't too sure about the settings, but it ended up printing very well. I'm really glad I chose this printer. The new tilting vat and all of the sensors, the auto leveling and all the fancy gadgets that comes with the modern printers makes it so much better than the one I had previously. There is even a sick webcam in it so you can do some time lapses, which you guys know I love time lapses. And exactly 2 hours, 35 minutes and 5 seconds later, the print is done but we're far from finished. We still have to clean and cure everything. I can now remove the build plate from the printer and start detaching all of our prints from the build plate. This resin printed super well, everything was stuck really nicely to the build plate. And I used my trusty scraper to get everything off. At this stage, everything is covered in uncured resin, so I try my best to keep stuff clean-ish. All my work surface is covered in plastic, and I'm working inside of metal non-stick cooking trays. We can now remove all of the supports from the pieces. It came out pretty easily. I was using 3D Printing Pro's settings for supports and they work amazingly. They don't create a ton of damage on the surface and they hold stuff pretty well. I'll include a link in the description to the videos with all the settings. Now time to clean up. I'm going to throw away all of the supports. And I start brushing off the excess resin of every piece. Just a first quick bath in a super dirty alcohol solution so that I can get rid of the majority of the resin that's on the piece without having to dirty up the whole vat that I use to clean all of the pieces thoroughly. During this whole process I'm wearing gloves and a mask because the stuff is toxic. Even with the water soluble resin it smells a bit less but it's still toxic. I'm done brushing all of the pieces, so I do a quick little cleanup. Then I start to load all of the pieces in my cleaning vat. There's a metal propeller at the bottom that shakes all of the liquid in it. So I put the vat on the washing station and I set a timer for uh, 7 minutes. Once that's done, I'll take them out of the cleaning station. And I'll give them one last brush with some clean alcohol solution to get rid of anything that wouldn't be clean during the bath. And at this point, if they're still sticky and very shiny, you can give them another bath and keep brushing them with your solvent until you're happy with the result. If you don't clean all of your pieces properly and you cure them with some leftover resin on it, you'll get some residue on your final print. I leave the pieces air dry properly for 30 minutes to an hour maybe, and I clean everything up again. Once everything is nice and dry, I load everything up on the curing station and I cook everything with the UV light for as much time as it needs to become nice and dry. An eternity later, everything is finally cooked and cured. You got your finished piece here. You can still do a ton of stuff to it, like sand it, prime it, paint it. 
you can remove all of the support marks that are in the base and then i just have to repeat the same process for every other piece in the chest set and this takes in consideration that you have zero print failures and that everything goes super smoothly with your printer which is more than often not the case so thanks for stopping by and i'll see you in the next one cheers